In today's video, I'm going over all of the Apple gear I currently use each and every day. Hey, I'm Jerry, and there was a time when I used all Apple gear from computer, tablet, and phone to TV box and even my router. And then I did it. I wanted to change, so from 2015 to the end of 2018, I basically did not use any Apple products. Then slowly, like some unscratchable itch, I started accumulating Apple stuff again, starting with the 2018 iPad Pro and then the Apple Watch in the spring of 2019. So here is the Apple gear I use every day, starting with the iPhone 12 Pro. The iPhone 12 Pro is the best iPhone I've ever owned and one of the best feeling. I love the squared off edges of the iPhone 12 series phone and I think that the flat edges actually help with grip. Although I prefer the size of the iPhone 12 mini, I went back to the Pro because of the extra battery life and just the slightly better cameras. Actually, I like to switch back and forth between the mini and the Pro and even the 11 just to change things up. But performance wise, all of the iPhones 12 just cut through any application or task and it's really hard to find anything to just dislike about using the iPhone 12 Pro. The screen is crisp and bright, the speakers are loud and clear, and because of the Apple ecosystem, the iPhone 12 just works extremely well with all of the other products we're gonna talk about. Normally my iPhone 12 Pro is wrapped in the Apple silicone case with MagSafe. I haven't been a big fan of the Apple silicone cases in the past because they tend to get shiny spots and tearing, and you can actually see some of the shiny spots starting on the edges of this iPhone 12 silicone case now. But I do like the feel of the Apple silicone cases because they're grippy, but not sticky which means I can get them in and out of my pocket with ease, but I don't worry about the phone being slippery enough to fall out of my hands, like when using the phone naked or with some other cases. And because the iPhone 12 Pro and the Apple silicone cases have magnets built in, I like to use them both with the Belkin Boost Charge Pro on my nightstand for charging my iPhone, Apple Watch, and AirPods, as well as with the Sateki 2-in-1 magnetic charging stand that I use on my desk. Next up is my Apple Watch which is the thing that pulled me back to the iPhone from Android. This is a Series 4 Apple Watch that I bought used on the website Swappa. I was able to get this stainless steel model for a couple hundred dollars less than new, and it came in mint condition. I wanted something to track my workouts and other health activities, as well as to view notifications. I'm currently using a leather loop knockoff from a company called Pinnacle Luxuries, but I frequently switch to the Apple Sport Band, Sport Loop, and some others. I wanted a cellular model specifically to try and leave my phone at home more often when I go for walks or quick errands and try to reduce my cell phone usage. Unfortunately, due to the pandemic, I have rarely left the home in the last year and that use case kind of evaporated, just like my workout habits, I guess. I do still like the Apple Watch for notifications, sending quick Siri dictated messages, and answering calls when my hands are full. Now that Spotify has cellular streaming and the weather is better, I may try to start venturing out more with just my Apple Watch and leave the iPhone behind. But to do that, I need my next Apple product, AirPods. AirPods were life-changing for me in 2017, that along with stretchy jeans. Finally, we had true wireless earbuds that had decent battery life, good speakers and mics, and a charging case that actually fits in your pocket. These are my second pair of AirPods, and these are the second generation with wireless charging case. I only upgraded because my first gen AirPods would not hold much of a charge after a couple of years, and I did not hesitate to buy these when they came out. I use AirPods all the time, from podcasts in the morning to YouTube on the couch and work calls while walking around the neighborhood. And hopefully you can't see this on the camera, but they're a little bit gross, but that's okay, they're mine. Nobody else is wearing them. I'm not sharing AirPods. Who shares AirPods? That's gross. I'll also use these AirPods while standing in line, running errands, or waiting at a doctor's office. The convenience of the AirPods is that they are small enough to just fit comfortably in your pockets all the time, and I only need to charge them once or twice a week. Let me be clear, I love AirPods. I recommend AirPods, and I'm not sure I can do adult life again without them. Now my main work computer right now is the 2020 27 inch iMac with the i7 and Radeon 5500 XT that I bought refurbished just about a month ago. I don't like to be comfortable, so my workflows change often, which is probably bad for my productivity. In the last couple of years, my primary computing device went from PC laptops to Samsung and Microsoft tablets to the iPad Pro, MacBook, and now back to the iMac. What I like about using an iMac is the simplicity of it. It's a powerful all-in-one computer with everything just built in, including display, speakers, camera, and mics. 
I've tried living the laptop as a desktop life and I much prefer the actual desktop life. I find that there are less issues compared to using external displays and constantly connecting and disconnecting peripherals. The 5K iMac display is the most well-rounded, consistent display you can find that doesn't cost $5,000. It's bright, sharp, and color accurate enough for most things. The iMac is great for remote work, video and photo editing, surfing the web, some light gaming, and pretty much any other regular computer task. The iMac comes, of course, with everything you need right out of the box, like the Magic Keyboard. I use the Magic Keyboard because I like the look and the feel of the keys. They have just the right amount of travel and are not too loud, and the keyboard is almost identical throughout all of Apple's products. I do like to use the MX Master 3 over the Magic Mouse because I feel like it has a more ergonomic feel. Although it doesn't have the touch sensitive surface like the Magic Mouse, the MX Master 3 does have a free moving scroll wheel, a horizontal scroll wheel, customizable buttons, and a function button for performing some of the other Mac gestures like showing spaces or switching between full screen apps. CalDigit also makes a number of docks and hubs to expand or relocate the most useful ports like USB and SD card readers, and these are perfect for use with an iMac. The TS3 Plus has 15 ports for USB, Thunderbolt, and audio. The Element Hub has three Thunderbolt 4 ports and four USB 4 ports for customizing the expansion that you need. And I also like these Kanto U2 speakers for an even better speaker setup. Now, before moving back to an iMac, I was using the MacBook Pro M1 as my primary device, and I still use it every day. When I need a change of scenery during the day or when I'm chilling in the evening, I like to have the full Mac experience. And of course, the M1 MacBook Pro is almost as powerful as my iMac. I can move any workflow from the iMac to the MacBook Pro and just continue what I was doing. I love the fact that the battery life is just so good that I can use the Mac Pro for hours at a time, put it down, pick it up the next day, and just keep going without needing to worry about charging it. These MacBooks are not perfect, but they're pretty close. There are so many great things to say about them, and I covered benchmarks and performance and even some issues in my three-month review, which you can find right up here. Unfortunately, the M1 MacBook Pro is so good for general use that my relationship with my iPad Pro has been estranged. For about two years, the iPad Pro was my main computer. As iPad OS has evolved, and we've seen a better, more desktop-like browser, better file management, and mouse and keyboard support, the iPad can be the main computer for a lot of people. The iPad Pro has features that no other Mac has, like, of course, the touchscreen, cellular connectivity, and overall, the iPad Pro is a better media consumption device, in my opinion, with its amazing screen and speakers. For two years, I was using this iPad Pro for everything, including video editing with LumaFusion, and it still ranks as my favorite way to edit photos and video because you can just use the trackpad on the iPad Magic Keyboard, Apple Pencil, or your finger to edit anywhere. Sometimes sitting on the couch with your feet up is just the best way to edit. I was using Photoshop on iPad to complete my thumbnails, Microsoft Word for scripts, and so on. The only reason I switched from using an iPad as my main computer was that I needed to do multi-cam editing. Now that LumaFusion has announced that it's coming later this year, I may give it another try. So for now, I sometimes use my iPad to test out new apps, but mostly it acts as a second display to my Mac using Sidecar. And the last Apple product I use every day is my Apple TV. Well, at least one of them. I have Apple TVs on all of my TVs now, and pretty much all content I view is through an Apple TV. Whether that's Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, Apple TV Plus, or even live TV using AT&T TV now, the Apple TV is my go-to box. Complaints about remote design aside, the Apple TV hardware is fast and fluid. All the apps you want are there, it integrates perfectly with AirPlay, and despite the price, I know Apple's not tracking every single thing I'm watching. And since the Apple TV is my main content viewing device on the TV, I like the fact that you can calibrate the audio delay, which is important depending on your audio setup, and now you can even calibrate your colors coming from the Apple TV, all with the help of your iPhone. For a number of years, I was using Roku on all of my TVs, and it's the little things like this that make the Apple TV the more complete set-top box package. So. Those are all of the Apple products that I use every day. Come to think of it, that's most of what Apple sells and I may have a problem. But let me know what you think. Do you switch between products like I do or do you have a smaller subset of go-to devices? Let me know below. If you haven't heard, there are a number of new devices coming out in a couple weeks like the new iMac. And if you're curious which one I'm getting, 
check out this video over here, that one. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it. Hit subscribe if you wanna see reviews of all of the new stuff coming and I'll see you next time.